Hello everybody, and welcome back to day 24 of the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. Today, I am going to be answering a question that Adam Moore asked me. He says, Hey Monista, awesome job. Who are some of the artists or writers that have influenced your work? What are some of your favorite comics? Now, um, I would like to preface this with saying that this is the second time I'm recording this because I started recording um, uh, talking about my list, and I started with the books and writers that have influenced my work, because I, um, before I was an aspiring, uh, comic creator, I was an aspiring, uh, novelist since middle school. I've wanted to be a published author for a lot of my life, and that's still true, uh, but now I'm just adding on to being a published author with being a published um, comic author. So it's just adding my two loves together, which is writing and art. So I started this this voiceover with talking about the writing influences, and then I got through my admittedly, like, eight book list. And it was a 25 minute video voiceover. And I was like, oh my god, I absolutely can't <laughs> do the writing. Um, so I thought that it would be unfair to talk about my writing for 25 minutes and save and, and make you wait that long to do any of, to talk about any of the comics or any of the artists. Um, that I am also influenced by. So, this will be a long video because I can't help but go off on tangents and ramble and explain what it is about these people that I love so much, um, but I will start with the artists um, and the comic uh, authors simply because, um, you know, this is a an art channel and the question was asked to me in the spirit of getting to know my um, artistic influences. So, let's start with um, the comic books and that have influenced me. And so, this is kind of a writing and art uh, uh, category combined. Um, a lot of these will be their, uh, art style, but some of these are also just their, um, story, and the, uh, yeah, just their story that has, um, influenced me. So, let's start. This is also in no particular order, this is just, um, as they came to mind, uh, I wrote them down. Um, so! The first one on my list is called Ghost Lights. Uh, also, I'm gonna butcher some of these names. Um, Fantakoi? Fantakoi. And I'm also gonna write them on the screen so that you can look them up if you'd like and stuff. So, Ghost Lights by Fantakoi is on this list um, because of its art style. It is just so beautiful. It is, um, a more anime uh, looking style. I have no idea where the author is from, so I'm not going to say that it's um, that it's definitely anime or not because I think um, like ma the manga actually it's not anime. I meant to say manga. The manga style is like something's called manga. I th don't quote me on this when it's made in Japan. Ghost Lights, absolutely beautiful artwork. The way that they do their, um, their uh, fantasy animals is just so beautiful. Um, the colors are so soft, but also, like, saturated. I don't really know how to explain it, but just, it's so nice to look at, and I really, really love it, and the way that they also do their panels, um, there's a lot of, like, flashbacks, and there's a lot of, uh, time skips, um, just the plot 
is uh, about, well, I'm not going to actually get into describing the plot because that will take me forever, um, but uh, the plot requires them to fade in and out and they weave through time so um, fluidly. I guess that's how to describe it, is that the plot makes time a very fluid and unpredictable and, um, and a ethereal concept, and so the way that they uh, panel also their pages and the way that they just, like, do the whole page layout and all of that um, really uh, does that, that feeling very well. They convey the concept of time and uh, the concept of time as an ethereal and fluid um, thing very, very well. And I, it's just so good. Um, next is Ingress Adventuring Company by uh, K-Artix. Um, so this one uh, is a fantasy story and I love the art style. It's very... Um, stylized, uh, I, I don't know if I've said this before, but the one thing that I really, really, really love about art styles, and the one thing that will really turn me off from an art style, is how an artist does the noses. Um, if a nose is weird looking or, like, ugly, like, it will, it's really hard for me to enjoy the art style, but if they have, like, really nice noses and, like, really interesting noses, then I'm in love. <laughs> and uh, the way that they do their noses in Ingress Adventuring Company is also really good. Um, so the, the, the way that they color and the way that they line makes it look like it's um, a traditional comic like they did all of their pages on paper. It looks very textured. Uh, it looks um, r really so, so uh, traditional um, page comic. That, I don't know if that, that uh, sentence made sense, but anyways, you know what I mean. It just looks nice. I like the way that they textured their line art and the way that they colored and the way that they made uh, their pages look like it was uh, printed on paper. Um, next is Long Exposure by Mars. Um, this is also another comic that has a very um, stylized uh, uh, art style. And it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I've talked to people who are, uh, have tried reading it and have said that they couldn't continue because of the art style, but the art style was actually what made me continue when the plot wasn't um, very gripping. Uh, it became gripping. You know, um, I'm not trying to, like, knock their, uh, their writing in any way, um, but... It was definitely the art style that drew me in and that kept me um, reading for, you know, the, the first uh, bit of the story. Um, and the way that they just, uh, they draw people as if they were archetypes, if that makes sense. I get the, the feeling as if I'm watching, like, um, a cartoon for kids. You know how, like, some cartoons, um, draw, uh, people with, in ways that, like, just people don't look, except, um, no one really questions the way that, that, that person is drawn, simply because, um, we've been, like, cartoonists, Ha, like animators, I mean, have been drawing people like that for decades, and so it's kind of been an animation like archetype. And so the way that they do that for like their comic um, style is just so interesting. Um, their yeah, it's just uh, 
some of the the characters are really like um, soft and their features are much more like their features and proportions are much more realistic and then other characters are super like angular and their like proportions are very much not realistic but it all blends together in like a super um, natural way once again uh, they make it look so good um, and so I really like long exposure uh, because of that next one is Sharp Zero by Robot Sharks. The art style, um, the art style and the plot have influenced me, I feel, in equal measure. Um, I really like the art style. It's definitely, um, an example of, of modern webcomic, um, modern American webcomic style. Um, and I really, I like how they draw, um, their characters simultaneously in a simplified but also, like, realistic-ish way. It's hard to explain because in some aspects it's, like, pretty realistic and in other aspects it's very, like, uh, simplified, I, um, what comes to mind is, like, stick figure simplified but that's not like true but that's just like what came to mind to describe the uh the way that they simplify it i don't know and <laughs> it's kind of hard to to explain but i also just really like that art style um and the plot the plot is about superheroes and um and about uh a world akin to like um any kind of Marvel or DC, uh, uh, world where people just have powers. Um, so it is about, like, superheroes, except the main character is just some normal kid who, like, gets powers and is transport- is, like, able to go to, uh, hell. I think it's, like, kind of hell in a sense. And- um, the style of that as well, and the plot, and just the idea of that was so, so interesting, because it's like, you know, it's funny how superhero, uh, stories are not considered fantasy. Like, no one, I've never really heard anyone describe the genre of superheroes other than superhero genre, um, but it is fantasy. It's people that have m powers, but it's not described as magic. It's described as superpowers. Um, and so the way that they, um, plot-wise, have combined the feeling of superpowers with the feeling of um, fantasy magic, like urban fantasy magic, is so interesting because technically... On paper, superpowers and magic aren't, like, any different. It's just the way in which, um, the, the society within the story treats those, um, those not normal people, and also the way that that, that those, um, not normal abilities are framed within the story. Um, and they, they do both of them at the same time. Uh, except it doesn't feel disparate. Um, I guess, like, a theme is just that these authors make fantasy stories that combine so many, um, crazy, unique elements, um, but put them together in a way that feels really cool and awesome and natural and unique. So, Sharp Zero... That's Sharp Zero by R Robot Sharks. Uh, next is OMG Check Please by, oh, I think their name is pronounced Ngozi? Um, so, this is a, a webcomic about um, a kid who is, uh, who plays hockey um, but he'd rather, or not that he'd rather, but he used to be a, um, ice figure skater, and, um, 
so he is not very a not very well suited to the contact sport nature of ice hockey and um so throughout the four books uh that she's put out for um omg check please uh it's basically a coming of age story but also um just a like a heartwarming like friendship story and uh, it's set in um college and i think that this is one where the art style is uh secondary to the plot and the way that the characters are because the characters are written with such personality um and the plot is is uh i think only the second story that isn't any kind of fantasy story this one is um pure uh what is the word contemporary yeah it's pure contemporary um literature but it's it's uh still engaging <laughs> It's funny because I actually um, get bored with stories that are just uh, set purely in our world. Um, and I think a lot of times it's because I'm reading or watching stories that where the author relies too much on contrived drama to up the stakes and to make um, things very dramatic because there is no other way to do that in a story where you can't have monster battles and magic and life or death saving the world kind of things. Um, so having a contemporary story on here, um, on my list, is actually kind of an achievement because that means that they created characters and um, relationships and plot that are engaging and fun and interesting without resorting to um, melodrama or frustrating misunderstandings or any of that kind of thing. So um, next one uh, actually is the same in a sense to OMG Check Please. It is also contemporary. Uh, but it's about high school kids, um, this time, and it is, you know, the, the, it, it influenced me the same, in the same way as OMG Check Please, except the art style does play a little bit more of a role. Um, the art style is the same-ish as Ingress Adventuring Company, in the sense that it looks very hand-drawn, um, like hand-inked on traditional like, traditionally inked is what i mean it looks very traditionally inked on like real paper um and the way that like their they do faces is so it's like i don't know the the style is kind of very simplified very like um boxy their figures like legs usually are just like rectangles and feet are just like triangles but it doesn't look like bad obviously um it's very uh, it's very good and interesting and i like to see the way that they i don't know streamline i guess their um figures and it's just so soft <laughs> um the like also the way that they do hair uh every time i see a figure and their hair is is drawn uh i just want to put my hand through the page and just like rub their head to see how like soft it actually is because it looks so soft um and oh did i <laughs> i don't think i ever uh ever said who the author was um hold on i have the book right over here on my bookshelf um 
Alice Oseman. Uh, ignore that sound. That was just something falling. <laughs> so Heartstopper by oof, Alice Oseman. I could have just paused the recording and then continued, but I didn't feel like it. Uh, so there's a little behind the scenes of me rummaging around on my bookshelf. <laughs> Um, so, Heartstopper, Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Very good. Also, just the, the colors. It's so pastel and soft. Um, I really like, really like the colors. Um, so, next one is not a, um, a webcomic. So, this one I actually found. This one I found through, um, what is it, a comic book store. So this one is American Vampire. Um, it's written by Scott Snyder, uh, but the art is by Raphael Albuquerque. Um, and I, and I pointed that out because the reason why I love this series is because of the art. Um, not knocking Scott Snyder, but, uh, this, book, or not this book, um, this comic series has influenced me through its, um, its art style, which is very, um, heavy on the blacks. It's very, uh, um, what I kind, kind of what I aspire my, uh, comics to look like. Um, it's like, it's heavy on the blacks. It has that kind of, like, uh, Sandman, um, drama to it like the the blacks make the lighting or the lighting makes the blacks really like stark and cover like half a face and it's and it's very much um oh you know I actually can't remember um who painted these but uh the really famous renaissance paintings that have like super oh my god it starts with an r is his name oh I can't remember but have that super um stark dramatic lighting uh and they're like oil paintings done like hundreds of years ago but um they're so good and uh I just love that kind of drama to to a scene it it creates such an an atmosphere and American Vampire like not just the way that the lines are done and the blacks are done, but also the colors, too. Um, I love the cover art. The cover art is so saturated, but, like, not in a gross way. It's so easy to make saturated co colors look really bad because you've, like, oversaturated it. Um, and really, like, hard to look at. But these are just so nice. Uh, like the the color palette seems like if you made this color palette super saturated it'd be so bad but it's not they just make it look so good um so that is american vampire and uh i would like to say some honorable mentions for um youtubers art youtubers that have also influenced me because I can't really talk about art that has influenced my style without talking about my teachers because I am and am a self-taught artist. I took a single art class in high school my freshman year and it was like a required um, fine art credit and it was like intro to fine arts or whatever, um, but it didn't teach me anything I didn't already know because it was an intro class. It was made for people who had never done any kind of art at all, um, so I am pretty much self-taught, um, and I taught myself through watching people's speed paints, um, on YouTube and then also watching people's informative art videos. But these people, um, their art, the way that they do art, their styles definitely influence me. And some of these I've been watching since I was, um, a kid, and some of these I've only just now, um, really started watching. 
uh, and this is also non-exhaustive. These are just the people who I feel have made the most impact on um, the way my art looks and the mediums in which I do my art. So, <laughs> to end this video, a honorable mentions of YouTubers. You can look up all of these people and find them um, right after if you feel like it. So, uh, Danica Sills. She is a watercolorist and I absolutely love her colors and um, the way that she does faces, especially eyes. <coughs> eyes uh, the, uh, her eyes are so, um, so interesting. They're so realistic, but also so not. <laughs> um, next is Pear Fleur. She also does watercolor. She also does gouache. Um, I love her pastel style. Um, the way that she does people is more realistic, um, is more, uh, leaning towards realism. Um, but she has a kind of, uh, she gives me Studio Ghibli vibes. <laughs> um, next is Fran, uh, Manessis? Manessis? Oh, I, I think that's how you say it. Um, she's Spanish, so I'm trying to pronounce it, um, in, in Spanish. Uh, but Fran Manessis is also, um, someone who's pastel, um, aesthetic I really, really like. Uh, she does such, like, soft, um, soft colors and soft line art, and her style is actually pretty, um, I don't really know what the word is because it's not cartoony, um, but it has the same kind of, uh, look as Heartstopper by Alice Oseman does, where it's, um, it's simplified people, and, uh, it gives me the vibes of, like, um, like, uh, the, the, uh, fuck, Adventure Time, like, how they draw people, like, it's very, um, simplified in that sense, uh, so I love her as well. Lena Danya, hyper-realistic oil painter, and, um, I am very much influenced by, uh, hyper-realism, Although, um, I don't aspire to be technically good at it, uh, I do very much like how hyperrealism looks, so, um, my art is much more, um, the way I draw people is much more realistic, um, because of my interest in these, uh, hyperrealistic artists. Um, Lena Danya does oil painting, um, but the next one, uh, WLOP, they're pretty famous, um, they have a webcomic, but I enjoy them mostly for their, um, YouTube, uh, channel. They do speed paints, and they are hyper, not hyper-realistic, but they're realistic in the sense of the way that they paint, digitally paint, um, their illustrations, um, but their art style, like, if you were to just look at a sketch, it does look very much like manga. It's, um, um, it's sort of how, like, Danica Sills' art looks. It's, like, halfway between, like, Western realism and, uh, Japanese, like, manga face and, like, people, and proportions. <laughs> um, next, Sarah, oh, I think it's, oh, I don't know, Tapus? Tepus? Tapes? Tepus? <laughs> um, but Sarah, she does watercolor, and her faces, um, I just love how soft, um, she does, like, the cheeks and the lips and, uh, her colors as well are just so nice. I don't have a lot of time for watercolor. I used to do watercolor almost exclusively, so she was very, um, formative for my watercolor style, uh, and I just love the way that she, um, 
does watercolor and she's she does also a lot of digital too and her style is um has a slightly different look from its watercolor to its digital but it still has the same kind of uh, foundations that I love, which is really just how she draws people. The way that their faces are structured uh, is very soft, and I really like it. Um, the next person, Kiwi Bird, they, uh, I'm pretty sure, they do exclusively digital art, and they do illustration, um, and they are also, like, uh, they paint in a way that is very like realistic except that the forms and the style and the structure of like their people are once again very like stylized like i love the way that their people are um the way that they look their faces and their eyes um very much like like a drawing it's so hard to describe exactly what a lot of these people's art looks like because it's a mash between like the manga graphic novel type way that um, people are drawn and the and like hyper realism like they're drawn in um, a stylized way, but painted and rendered so realistically, it's like, I feel as though it's a, a media, like a genre of its own, um, and it's very much, um, a, a s modern style too, which is interesting, uh, you don't really see anything like it outside of the rise of digital art, um, and so their, their work is just so fun and cool to look at. Um, next is Juicy Ink. Um, and she is another watercolorist. And I love the way, like, her, the way she does watercolors. The colors of her watercolors. And also just the way she draws. Like, all of those things are just so good. So aesthetically pleasing. I love to look at it. Um... I feel like now I'm just repeating myself because I love to watch these people's videos, uh, and they all have either, like, a super soft watercolor, like, aesthetic, or, like, a really hyper-realistic, also stylized, um, digital style. Like, it's one of two, um, and so I like them all basically for the same reasons, um, and so that is the, uh, the end of my- so this video is the longest that I've done so far, um, and I really tried to, um, stop myself from going on and on and on and on about, um, all of the things that I love about these people. Uh, I, um, will link- uh, all of the comics that I mentioned. I will link, um, also all of the people that I talked about, um, in all of the YouTubers that I talked about in the description box below. So if any of, um, these artists or these, uh, these comics, um, interested you, you can just, like, click it. Um, and I've done all the work for you so you don't have to worry your typing fingers at all um and yeah that's it uh thank you so much um for watching thank you so much to adam lore for um requesting this video i think it's uh funny that i I asked people to ask me questions, but I actually didn't really expect to get any, which is kind of silly, because I have, like, a couple of 
watchers that have consistently been like interacting with my videos um so i don't know why i didn't expect them to interact in this way as well um but i really appreciate it uh, and i was super excited um to get this one that i actually deleted the original um voiceover for day 24 um because i just really wanted to record this one this this question um the original voiceover was about like i don't know i don't even really remember but it had nothing to do with um with the question uh so um yeah that is actually all i have for you today uh I am always open for questions. I'm always open for answering anything you guys have about um, anything art-related, anything to do with um, even my comic as well. So this is definitely not like the the last, like the only video where I answer a question. Um, if anybody has anything, ask it. Also, um, if you guys like as well, any of the people or stories that I mentioned, um, comment below what, which ones and what you like about it. Like, um, I love talking about art and I love talking about stories. Those are my two favorite things. So, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and, uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.